From Nashville, Tennessee, Music City, USA, and the home of hot chicken, it's the Rick Altizer Show. Sit back, buckle up. Rick will talk with the movers, shakers, and creators who put Christ in Christian entertainment. He's a man who's clear so the world can hear. Here's Rick Altizer. Hey, thank you for joining me today. I am uh, honored, excited, humbled. The words kind of fail me because I'm going to have to say beyond any stretch of the imagination, this is the most important film we've had on this podcast, bar none. Uh, We're talking about a movie that's going to be in theaters October 23rd and 24th. It's called Beyond Utopia. And um, I'm just going to kind of give the quick synopsis of it. It follows a pastor in South Korea who's helped over 1,000 people escape North Korea. And with the advent of the cell phone, uh, we're getting all this footage from North Korea, and there's no recreations. This is actual live action happening. And uh, this is a movie that I don't think I've ever said this before. Everyone needs to see this movie. You need, and I say that word, I know that's a big word, and I know that's a marketing ploy, but I am I am for real. You need to see this movie. It was one of the most impo- powerful, impacting movies I've seen. I don't know when I've seen a doc that was this this powerful. And so uh, I've got on the on the uh, on the interview today. I've got Madeline Gavin, the director of this film. I've got Pastor Kim himself. Uh, he's actually in Southeast Asia somewhere in an unknown location where he's just helping a group of defectors uh, leave North Korea. And we also have his interpreter on with us as well. So welcome everyone to the show. And uh, I I just, uh, you know, Madeline, I'll start with you. This, this movie was amazing. I, 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 it was so powerful, so uh, impactful and so important. Can you just give me a real quick heads up for, for other people here who just are going, what is he talking about beyond utopia? Can you just give us a little bit about what this movie is? Um, yeah. And thank you for that amazing intro. Um, it, this movie really was a miracle. I mean, that, that is like plain and simple, a miracle. And it is not only pastor Kim's work with defectors, you know, helping so many people to escape out of North Korea, but it was his, um, his work with us, you know, as basically a line producer. I mean, we were able to shoot in places that people never go, that people never want to go. Um, And it was all because of Pastor Kim and his vast underground railroad network that goes through China and Southeast Asia. Um, So we were, as you said, there were no recreations. I mean, we were following these stories as they progressed not knowing what was going to happen next, not knowing what was uh, around the next corner. And so, you know, this was a, 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 a miracle. It was a it was about trust and courage. And, you know, for the family as well, because we follow two stories. One is a mother trying to rescue her son out of North Korea. Another is a family of five, including young children and a grandma in her early 80s trying to escape out of North Korea. And for everyone, the trust that was involved, you know, for this family, just blindly going out into the unknown world because they had never been out of North Korea. Um, For Pastor Kim, for us. So, yeah, it it, it is. It's an it was such an extraordinary experience. And um, and I am so it's the most meaningful thing I've done in my life, in my career. Um, And really, it is about trust, courage, and it's a miracle. And, and Pastor Kim, Pastor Kim. I mean, it's amazing. You've got, you've got a family escaping Korea and you're filming. It's get they're Are they filming themselves with, with iPhones? Is that what this is? So in China, in the portion of the film that was in China, none of us went into China, even Pastor Kim, Pastor Kim used to go into China for, for escapes. But ever since 2009, he was warned that if he, entered China again, he could be kidnapped back into North Korea. Um, So he does not go into China either. So in China, the only people filming were Pastor Kim's network. And some of them are brokers, you know, who work, who do the work for money. Some of them are parts of his network who are doing it for the, 
you know, the spiritual cause of helping people gain freedom. Um, and the so it was only the network that was shooting in China, and then one family member who had already defected to South Korea. He met his family halfway through China, and he was able to do some shooting along the way with them. Um, Pastor Kim allowed us to go into Southeast Asia, and that's where he went. And so we shot in Southeast Asia, um, on the on the border of Laos and Thailand, in Vietnam and Laos, and then of course in South Korea. I mean, it was it was riveting. You're following a family, and Pastor Kim. I want to ask him too later about all that travel up and down those mountains. I mean, you're following a family getting out of South Korea, getting out of North Korea and their journey. And it's a long journey to get to, to uh, Thailand. It's, it's quite a ways. And they had to go through, a, it was just amazing. The filmmaking was fantastic on this. I'm just going to just real, real quick, Madeline, just tell you what a great, I'm a, I'm a uh, documentary director myself. And I'm just telling you, the filmmaking was fantastic. You, you didn't over, you know, you, you took two, two major stories you know, the, the, you you could have had fourteen stories and made it a mess, but you 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 took two stories and you and Pastor Kim and you stuck with it and man, what an amazing amazing piece, fantastic. So I'd like to ask Pastor Kim, um, tell me a little bit about what that conversation with God was like when God called you to go rescue people from North Korea. In the Bible. God used Moses to rescue and lead the nation of Israel and escape slavery. When I was young, I dreamed of the unification of our two countries. God led me to the border area of China and North Korea. I saw the North Korean people and the street, the orphans, and I saw dead bodies floating in the river daily. I called out and prayed to God. I said, God, if you want me to, I will devote my life to rescuing these people. Amazing. So, Pastor Kim, talk to me a little bit about what um, you saw in uh, in North Korea. Tell me a little bit about what you saw in North Korea. And, and are you from North Korea? I am from South Korea, but as you know, South and North Korea used to be one country. We speak the same language. We are the same people. Since we're neighbors, I got very familiar with the North Korean people. I went to the border between China and North Korea doing missionary work. And I saw at the Tumen River between South and North Korea on the way to China, I saw dead bodies floating in the river. But what was more shocking to me was that no one wanted to take the bodies and bury them. That was the job of the Chinese soldiers and North Korean soldiers. But what they would do is they would take a big stick and push the bodies from one side of the river to the other. The North Koreans would push the dead bodies over to the Chinese side, and then the Chinese soldiers would take sticks and push the bodies back to the North Korean side, and no one wanted to bury them. At one point, they would put a hole in the body, and the body would sink. I was just shocked to see how little care they had for the bodies of human beings. Terrible. Terrible. Um, Madeline, can you share us a little bit about kind of like what is happening in North Korea that, that we're not seeing, that we're not being told or that we don't, that Americans might not know about or might be shocked to know about? Yeah, I mean, um, there's so much in North Korea that we don't know about. And that is why I wanted to make this film, why I felt like this film had to be made. Um, because when I started doing research, you know, I, I dug very deeply into the internet and I, I did searches in different languages using VPNs as if I was searching from different countries. And by searching from all these different countries and different languages, I was able to find little tidbits of things coming out of North Korea that I might, that we would never know, including hidden camera footage of, you know, shot by very brave North Koreans who are risking their lives 
to get the truth of their store of of their country out to the outside world and they're shooting you know with cameras inside paper bags in their sleeves in their pockets um and when i discovered this i realized that we don't ever hear from the north korean people there are 26 million people in north korea but what we see on the news is really just what the kim regime wants us to see right you know it's we see news about the missiles sometimes news about their parades we watch their big you know elaborate parades and i suddenly felt like we have to there are 26 million people who the rest of the world is ignoring and doesn't have the opportunity to get to know um and so i felt i have to do this um in terms of what we don't know it's everything it's it's that you know the majority of the country is malnourished you know people are still dying of starvation um the levels of control in that country are really unprecedented there is i mean freedom of expression there's no expression whatsoever even saying i'm hungry can be taken as an offense against the government even if you don't blame it on anyone if you just say i'm hungry um so it's um you know as as many people have said it's the largest really prison in the world um and we don't know that. And, and the people who now I've met out of North Korea are some of the most, you know, some of the strongest um, people I've ever met. You know, in North Korea, people use the word endure a lot. You know, we have to endure, we have to endure. And because life is about endurance there, um, you know, we've got an 80 year old grandma, as you see in the film, trekking through the jungles between Vietnam and Laos, something that I don't think my 80 year old grandmother, you know, could have done, but for a woman who was brought up enduring and every bit of her life is work and struggle and, you know, effort, this was, you know, actually, she was actually able to do it. Um, but one thing I do try to do in the film is sort of woven between these two escapes that we follow or attempts at escape that we follow are little tidbits about North Korea. And I use a lot of the footage that I found on the internet to sort of give you little pieces of information about what it's like, um, you know, what you, what you I not, don't wanna to give too much away, but like, you know, in North Korea, you have to have portraits of the leaders on your wall displayed in the most prominent place and guards will come into your house totally unannounced and check to see if there's dust on those pictures if there's dust you will be punished you know so it throughout the film i try to give these little tidbits of what life is like so that when you come out of the film you've not just you know watched these attempts at escape and met these people and gotten to know and love them but you've also learned things about north korea that we have never been able to learn yeah it was it was great filmmaking you, you edited it as well correct yeah yeah, it was great. You you did a great job, Madeline. Really. Thank you. Thank you. This this movie is so well made, but but beyond that, and the message is so important. What you're doing is so important. So it has to be made well, you know, and I I can totally get the weight of that. It's like I'm telling one of the more important stories that has been on film in, you know, a very long time. I need to get this right. I can understand the pressure that that had to be of uh, feeling that of, okay, the weight of what I'm doing is matters. This is going to go, you know, this could make ma major political changes in our country. Hopefully, hopefully this will right. spark stuff. Just amazing. So great job again. Uh, Thank you. You can yeah. just, I'm just going to say this again. It's in theaters, uh, Fathom event, October 23rd and 24th. And you can find out a, a theater near you by going to, and more info about the film by going to beyondutopiadoc.com. And that's for documentary. So beyondutopiadoc.com. And some people might think, oh, I don't, I'm not a big documentary fan. No, trust me. This is more than a documentary. This is something you really need to see. So I'd like to ask Pastor Kim, um, is there an underground church in North Korea? What is the status of Christianity in North Korea? Actually, at the beginning, I didn't really believe there was such a thing as an 
underground church in North Korea, but there actually is. I rescued an 85-year-old grandma about seven or eight years ago, and she had memorized much of the Bible. She had memorized all of the verses of what she had available to her. That's when I realized there was a church in North Korea. They oppress Christians, but God works in miraculous ways that we could never imagine. In North Korea, they make being a Christian impossible. But for me, to rescue a grandmother who had much of the Bible memorized, and she was a Christian, it was very eye-opening for me. For the second part of your question, the punishment for being a Christian in North Korea is death. But that doesn't mean you die alone. If your Christianity is exposed, not only will you die, but your entire family will be executed. That's how severe a crime it is in North Korea to be a Christian. You and your whole family will be killed. So um, it is a capital offense to be a Christian. You will die and your entire family will die. And how do they know if you're a Christian? Is, um, if you have a Bible, if you pray, if you have a prayer meeting, if you gather together and study scripture, uh, what, what are the qualifications of what, what they would consider someone who's a Christian? If you just have a sheet of paper that's got Bible verses on it, does that is that a death sentence? Anything like that is <clears throat> a death sentence. I mean, that is... And there is a little piece in the film about that, but having a Bible, studying the Bible, studying verses, meeting, you know, secretly with others to pray, all of that is the, the greatest defense against the Kim regime, you know, because in so many ways they have co-opted the Bible for their own purposes. They've kind of made themselves, you know, God um, and the son of God. And so, yeah, it's, it is, it steps on their entire mythology and it's a huge threat to them. It's unbelievable. Kim Jong-il, his, his dad is God and he's the son of God. And they have, don't they have a similar 10 commandments? Yes. I mean, so when I was, you know, interviewing defectors in um, South Korea, before we even started following these stories, um, yeah, I was I was told by by a few different defectors, and there's one who speaks about it in the film, that uh, when they were exposed to the Ten Commandments after leaving North Korea, they realized that, you know, in fact, North Korea was was had their own had basically co-opted the Ten Commandments and used it for their own ideology and their own mythology. So the uh, the greatest offense in uh, North Korea is being a Christian. Is that right? Yeah, and, and watching content from from the outside world. Those are the two great because they both threaten the regime. Because if North Koreans, you know, see content, movies, et cetera, from, about, from the outside world, they can start to feel like, oh, wait, why don't I have those things that? other people have why am i living in such deprivation so the north korean government doesn't want people to know what the outside world is really like so that's a huge offense and then the bible because again that threatens the deity status of the kim regime but pastor kim may have something more to say about that too so the worst offense that you can commit in north korea is to offend the dear leader they make the dear leader God. There are so many things they take from the Bible and copy. Kim Il-sung is God, and Kim Jin-il is his son, so God and his son. Yes, what Madeline said is correct, because Kim Il-sung has to be God. So if you say there's another God, then that is a terrible offense, punishable by death. 
So professing Christianity is the same thing as denying Kim Il-sung, who they refer to as the dear leader. I know of one person who wrapped up his shoes in a newspaper that had Kim Jong-il's picture on it, and they arrested him. So they make Kim Il-sung and Kim Jong-il, the Kim leaders, God. In North Korea, there can only be one God, and that is why if you are a Christian, that is a great offense. But our God, the Christian God, is known as love in the Bible. The Kim leaders, they claim they are God, but they are very far away from anything like a loving God. That's the big difference. So, uh, Pastor Kim, what are your hopes for this film in America? What do you hope Americans will see? I recently visited the United States, and I was impressed at how much freedom you had and how wonderful your democracy was. But I want the American people to know, don't take those freedoms for granted. There are people all over the world who live without any freedom and without any voice. I know there are lots of problems still in America, but I still believe America is the greatest country in the world. It's because America was started by people of faith. And there are a lot of people there who still have faith. In Korea, many pray to their great ancestor to get a blessing from this ancestor. So, in a way, America started with a great ancestor. Your ancestors were people of faith. America is blessed, and Americans need to appreciate the freedom and democracy they have. I like the scripture John 8:32. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. People in America have great freedoms, but they need to be enjoying the freedom that is in Christ, Jesus Christ. Otherwise, if they have too much freedom without any guidance, without the truth that sets them free, there's a possibility that they could be communists like North Korea. Freedom is needs guidance, and we find that in God's Word. Well, we have a lot of prisoners here as well who are imprisoned in the uh, the prison of their self. They've made themselves God, and that's a prison that uh, doesn't really, it leads to depression and uh, discouragement without the love of God, with love of Christ. It's, you know, so there's all kinds of prisoners all over, all over. Um, Madeline, what are your hopes for this film? What would you like to see? Um, well, I would, you know, uh, what I would really hope is that this film helps to bring change, you know, f for and hope, but change to for North Koreans, you know, that this can actually have an impact um, because people have been voiceless and trapped and not even allowed to be aware of their own feelings, you know, not even being able to express themselves for more than 70 years. And we have not been able to hear from them. And it's an outrage, you know, it is so unjust. It is so not what we are talking about when you talk about, you know, God and love. So I really hope that this film will have an impact on all of that because that's what these people deserve, you know. We're talking about Beyond Utopia. It's going to be in theaters October 23rd and the 24th. And you can find information by going to beyondutopiadoc.com. Uh, I know when I saw it, I was shocked at what was going on in North Korea. I was just shocked at how bad it is. And in there, you said something, and I'd like for you to talk about this a little. You said you'd really got to go back to Nazi Germany to find atrocities that are similar. And, um, you know, I, I would put, Stalin in there too. There's a lot going on there with Stalin, but um, you know, can we just talk about that? How how this can 
We're in 2023. How can this, how can this be happening in, in our world today? Yeah. I mean, it's, um, you know, there have been studies done that have said that there's nothing that is comparable to what's going on in terms of human rights abuses inside North Korea, other than going back to the camps and Nazi Germany and using that as a reference. Um, and how can it be going on? I mean, it is so deeply <laughs> wrong, outrageous, horrendous. Um, obviously, without the missiles, North Korea would not even exist at this point. I mean, this would have all been uh, dealt with. But, you know, everybody who we've spoken to from the policy side, from the NGO side, from the spiritual side, believes that ultimately change inside North Korea is going to have to come from the people themselves. And so that's why this, you know, as, as Pastor Kim said, the truth will set you free. This idea that, you know, information coming out of North Korea to, to crack open what is really going on there so that we can all see it, witness it, and therefore feel that we have a responsibility to help, right? And then information from the outside going in so that North Koreans can start to have some little sense of entitlement, some sense that, wow, I deserve something more, you know, because without that sense that you deserve anything, if you're just pushed around and kicked around, um, how can you ask for anything more? And so the exchange of information, getting the truth out both ways is so important. Um, I think, you know, it is North Korea is such a tricky country to deal with um, because of how sealed off it is. I mean, people in North Korea just don't have internet. Like they don't, you know, if you're next to the border of China, you might be able to pick up signals now and then. But for the most people, the majority of millions of people, tens of millions of people in North Korea have no idea about anything about the outside world. They only know what they've been taught which is basically that they live in the best country on earth. And that's what most North Koreans believe because they have no reason not to believe it. What, Even what if their country told, is- What have they been sorry, told about Americans? What have they been told about Americans? Oh, well, Americans are the are their biggest enemy. Americans, they've been told that Americans are, all, all Americans are ugly, horrible. All they want to do is kill North Koreans basically Americans, like that is what Americans think about. That's what they've been told, that Americans kind of obsess about killing and destroying North Koreans. So they've been taught that the uh, United States is their biggest enemy. South Korea and Japan are second and third to that. Um, and, you know, most North Koreans obviously have never even seen an American. Um, other than in depictions, that the North Korean government puts out in propaganda, which is always with Americans being very aggressive, very, you know, deformed, monstrous. Um, they don't even have the word American. I don't think I can use the word that they call Americans, but they call Americans a very bad word. And that is the, that is literally, like there is no word just American. In, in in North Korea, it's yeah. American. You, you can say you can say American bastard. Oh, it's that's, American yeah. bastard. That's the so word. So when they it's, talk about it's one word, it's it's uh, yeah. it's not American. It's American bastard. That's what yeah. it is. Oh, that American bastard did this. Oh, yeah, we heard some those American yeah. bastards want to get us this. Yeah, and even in the school books um, for children in their math, and I this is in the film too. You know, they'll have math equations like. You know, five American bastards came over and tried to capture three North Korean, you know, soldiers. You know, the North Korean soldiers killed two of the American bastards. How many American bastards are left? Like, right. It's ingrained on every level from childhood. Yeah. We kill them and they kill us. They, they want to kill us and we kill them. It's, it's, right. it's insane. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's yeah. th that that was unknown. Yeah, it was unknown, and so I mean I think it's important to make that known. Absolutely, yeah. So many things were unknown. That's why when I started doing research, my eyes just popped open 
And I was. Yeah. I'm so glad you're doing it. this, Madeline. So glad. Well, uh, thank you. For was there, doing this. was there a uh, danger? Were you in danger? I mean, you know, there's always the potential for danger. You know, Pastor Kim has been known by the regime for 20 plus years and has been uh, at times um, told by the South Korean government that they had intel that there were North Koreans potentially in South Korea looking for him. So he has been offered bodyguards at certain points in time. Um, certainly even in Southeast Asia where he is now, and when we were there, I mean, we saw North Koreans, uh, soldiers training the Laotian military in Laos. Um, so there's always, you know, the potential for danger, but I think also this story became so important and, you know, getting this information out and giving these 26 million North Koreans a chance to have their voices heard was so important that there was there's, there was no turning back in the making of this film. And Pastor Kim is, you know, there's been no turning back for him for 24 years, 23 years now since he started doing this work. So it's, we have to, you know, honor the people and, 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 and the mission that we're on to try to help these people. Amazing. Amazing. Pastor Kim. Uh, I noticed you're pastoring a church called Caleb Mission. Tell me a little bit about your church that you pastor and, uh, you know, where you got the name. It is taken from Caleb in the Bible. He prayed to God, give me this mountain concerning Hebron. I prayed the same prayer to God. I said, give me North Korea and I will bring it into your hand. And so that is why I chose the name Caleb Mission. Caleb Mission has been rescuing North Koreans for the last 24 years. We rescue North Korean street orphans and also women who cross the North Korean border and are sold into false marriage or prostitution in China. Yes, it is always dangerous work to do what we do, but as you saw in the film Beyond Utopia, as a pastor, I rescued them from North Korea, but at the same time, I've been praying with them. So on this journey, they're also learning how to pray and experience how God has led them and rescued them through this extremely dangerous journey. And in the end, they all become sincere Christians because they actually experience how prayer works. I am very joyful when I rescue them, but can you imagine how joyful God is when he rescues their soul? Not just the physical body being saved, but God saving their soul for eternity. So I'm just thinking about how joyful God will be and that gives me great joy also. So at the Caleb Mission, we don't stop after we rescue them from North Korea, but we help them to settle into life in South Korea. We teach them how to be self-reliant. We built the North Korean Defectors Community Center so people can come together that don't have any family. They are strangers in South Korea. The North Koreans come there, we gather together, they bond, they eat together, they pray together, and in this way, we actually heal their trauma because all of the North Korean people have terrible, traumatic memories. So people with similar backgrounds come and talk about their past and the sadness they have, and they actually find healing together. We are also preparing them to become missionaries in the future when North and South Korea are unified. When the North Korean people go to North Korea to preach the Bible, it's going to be much more effective because it's their people. So we are getting ready to send missionaries when the country is finally unified in the future. I believe one day North and South Korea will be unified and the gospel will be free to travel throughout the country. Amazing. So I just, you, again, I know we're, we're getting close to being, I don't want to keep you guys too long, but I'm very interested in knowing. So when, uh, for Pastor Kim, Sonny, when 
when um, a North Korean defector comes, they haven't heard about Christianity. You know, if they if it, if they're talked about it, they they die. So they're you know it's it's something that in a lot of for many of them might be foreign. They might not know anything about it. How do they receive the gospel when Pastor Kim uh, shares the gospel of Jesus Christ with them? How do they receive that? Do do some people uh, do they have open? Are they open to that, uh, or are they or are they closed off to it? And and um, how many receive Christ and how many just kind of say, well, that's great, but I don't believe that. You know, how many? I, I, I'm just interested to see how that's res- how they respond to that. I actually do not preach to them in the beginning because, as you know, in North Korea, if they even hear the gospel, they are going to die. So I do not want to scare them off at the beginning, but as a pastor, I pray all the time before I eat or before I do something important, I will pray. And they see me praying. At some point, they start saying amen with me, and then they start to learn that I and the people of the Caleb mission really care for them, even risking our lives for them. So they really know that I care for them, and when I'm praying for them, it becomes very natural that they start to know God and learn how to pray. We saw in the movie that there was a person praying for the first time, and that was the first time he had ever heard the name Jesus. There is also a scene where there was as a grandmother and a little girl praying, and they didn't know what they were doing. They were opening their eyes and folding their hands, but they said, Amen. Now the same people go to church and are strong believers in Christ. The last time I spoke with her, she said she praised God because every time I prayed for her, she experienced a miracle. God really saves these people, not just physically, but spiritually. So it happens very naturally. I'm just a pastor praying and they follow along. When they get to the safe house, that is the last stage in Thailand, and they go to a detention center, which is much better than where they've come from. But their situation still is not fancy, so they need to be nurtured physically and spiritually and mentally prepared. So they stay in the safe house for a few months, and naturally they see how we live and how we love them, and they want to learn more about the Bible. And so we preach to them. We had a a baptism yesterday for some newly rescued North Korean defectors. God is being glorified, and North Koreans that. are being saved. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you guys so much for for doing this. We're talking about Beyond Utopia uh, in theaters October 23rd and 24th. Go to beyondutopia.doc.com for a ticket near you, and you need to do this. You need to do this. So I'd like to pray for Pastor Kim. Father God, you love the Korean people. You sent your son to die for them. And I thank you that you have sent Pastor Kim and others to share that message. I pray you would protect Pastor Kim, guide and lead him. I pray your Holy Spirit would fill him and lead every word he says. Bless his church, his ministry, and his work. And I pray, Lord, for a revival in North Korea. Save and rescue these people that you love. And Lord, we pray for an end to this evil regime. Bring your freedom and your peace to North Korea. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. So you can quote me, Madeline. Okay. You can quote me. (laughs) The most important film you'll see. I'm writing this down. <laughs> Actually, I have a really important message to send. During the pandemic, the border was closed, and whoever was captured from North Korea was detained in China. It's about 2,600 people. 
After COVID ended, they were preparing to send them back to North Korea. That would be a death sentence for all of them. So I went to Washington, D.C., in front of the Chinese embassy and protested. There were so many Christians from all over America protesting, too. A few days ago, regardless of the protests, they sent 600 North Korean defectors back to North Korea. We need to, we need to be praying then, Americans, as you listen to this, pray for the 2,000 that are left in China that they don't go back to North Korea. Because if they go back to North Korea, it's a death sentence. They die. What makes it worse is that these 600 were all Christians. They sent all the Christians back first. So since they are Christians, that is a death sentence. So we need to pray. We really need prayer. So they sent the 600 back because they were Christians. That's why they sent them back. Well, the Chinese send everyone back, but the 600 were sent back first because they're Christian. The other 2,000 that have been in prison in China during the pandemic when the border was shut down so they couldn't be sent back, those will probably be sent back soon. But the 600 who were Christian were sent back first. And that's a death sentence. And China knows that when they do that. So in addition to the 2,600 that have been detained, there were many North Korean defectors hiding in China because during the pandemic, the rescue was impossible. All of our rescue routes were closed. 200 people have contacted the Caleb mission for a rescue, and those people are in a horrible situation. And 30 people need immediate rescue. We need to rescue them as soon as possible before they're captured and sent back to North Korea. And unfortunately, during the pandemic, the cost to rescue North Korean defectors went up probably more than 10 times. This is making it difficult for us to rescue lives, so we need to talk about the money. The thing is, everything is ready, but we are struggling. Caleb Mission is struggling to find the finances to rescue these people. This is a difficult situation right now, so please pray for this situation that God will find a way for us to rescue all these precious souls. If someone wants to give to Caleb Mission to help rescue uh, North Koreans, someone wants to give funds, how would they do that? So we are set up in the U.S. as a nonprofit. You can donate through the website give.calebmission.com. Give.calebmission.com. They have people that they weren't able to get out after COVID. They're there. They have more than they're used to, you know, usually have, and they're needing funds. Give.calebmission.com. I, boy, I, I'm going to do that after after this is over. That's the first thing I'm going to do. And uh, I'll tell you what, you see this film, you're going to go, okay, that's a, that's a really good use of my funds. And um, man, what an important movie. Madeline, you've made something so important. Thank you. Thank you for helping us see what this is. Thank you, Pastor Kim, for putting your life on the line and being Jesus to these uh, prisoners and helping set the captives free. And, um, you know, we need to be praying for, for Korea, pray for unification of Korea, that um, this terrible evil regime is defeated and is uh, ousted, and that Korea is one again, and that uh, the gospel can go forth and bring freedom spiritually as well as politically to these people. And uh, just so grateful Thank you, Pastor Kim, for being here. I know it's 11, 11 p.m. for you. It's 9 in the morning for me, but it's 11 p.m. for you guys. So from Korea and all over uh, Asia, some a secret location in Asia, uh, thank you so much. And Madeline, thank you again for making this great film and being with us today. What an, what an amazing, amazing film. And uh, uh, just excited to see what happens. And I hope maybe this sparks some, some light in, politically here in America that we start highlighting this, do something about it. 
and help people send people to give.calebmission.com so that they can start supporting this very important mission. So, um, you know, we spend all this money on Starbucks coffee. You know what? There's other things we could be doing that's got way more uh, eternal significance. And this is definitely one of them. So I highly recommend that. Thank you guys so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank, Thank you. you. God bless Thank you. you. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you. All Thank right. you. All right. Bye-bye. If there's a show you've missed, you can go to my website, rickaltizer.com, and catch up. Or you can listen to my podcast in iTunes or wherever you hear your podcasts. Just search for The Rick Altizer Show. Altizer is spelled A-L-T-I-Z-E-R. I want to thank you for listening. Hey, would you tell a friend about this show and share the love? Be sure to check us out again next week as we discuss how we communicate the gospel through media to our culture. Let's be clear so the world can hear. I'll talk to you next week. Thanks for listening.